Y'all are here today. This is lesson four. Um, it's about fear. And I'll uh, go ahead and, and say our morning prayer. Um, and then we'll jump into the kind of review of what we have done in the last three sessions. And then the next section that this starts. So let's go ahead and, and uh, we'll say our prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for uh, this beautiful day where I am. I hope it's beautiful. Well, it is beautiful wherever you are, uh, wherever the sun has come up for you this morning. I know that it is um, a beautiful day. We have that mindset that uh, this is your day and you have made it for us. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, thank you for this lesson that we are going to talk about our fears and Lord, help us to just have those dissolve and melt away so that we can do what you have called us to do. Lord, help uh, each one who is here and watching this later to step into their purpose, Lord. And so much of that is just to eliminate the fears that we have uh, so that we can uh, step into what you have called us to do. And those fears are all sorts of different things. Lord, help us identify those today and make a plan and strategies to eliminate those and move forward. Watch over our time today and thank you for the ones who are here and the ones who will watch this later. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, hey, Nanette, I see that you jumped on. Alrighty, so I am going to just, uh, do hey, good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm kind of in a different uh, a different setting of this week. Um, I'm at a women's conference, so, or women's retreat. So I'm taking Sounds a few- Sounds like fun. Oh, it is it is really, really awesome. Uh, we, we spent three days just listening to what God wants to tell us we like don't even talk we have books and bibles and nature and hiking and waterfalls and we just come together on sunday and we talk about what god has been speaking into us for like three days it is it's awesome <laughs> so um let's see i am going to okay so i want to review just a little bit because um like i said in our uh our, this lesson is kind of broken up into three sections and it's always to me a good idea just to kind of review the section we've been in um, so that we can tra transition into this new section we're starting today um, and always kind of go back and look at the whole thing because at the end uh, you know all of these pieces are a whole so the last three sections that we have looked at the last three lessons are discovering how unique that you are and how you have a God anointed uh, uh, personality. Uh, you have gifts and exactly how God has made you unique to what he is, he's called you to do. So we have looked back on our life to see all the fingerprints that God um, has been in our life and where he has touched our life throughout everything that we've been doing. Uh, maybe we haven't noticed it, but I hope in that lesson you realize that God has been there and teaching you things and uh, kept you maybe from some disasters. So I hope in that lesson that you learned that God's fingerprints have been on your life the whole time. The second lesson we did was about your personality um, and just talking about how God specifically made you uh, he crafted you and created you and knit you together uh, in the womb and he didn't make mistakes. You are here specifically with your personality and the way you're wired. And that's how God wanted you to be. Um, and he is here. He is always there to help you with the weaknesses uh, that you perceive you have so that uh, he can help you overcome that but you are made perfectly exactly like you wanted the third lesson was um what shapes you in the environment so we talked specifically about our family dynamics and 
uh, what has shaped you throughout your life. Uh, a lot of that is uh, the environment the, that we are uh, brought up in. So we talked a lot about the family dynamics. So that's kind of the, the first three lessons about discovering how unique and God crafted you are. So we're going to move into another section, and this is identifying strongholds in your life. So the next one, two, three, four, six lessons, we're going to talk about a stronghold um, on each one. And today we're going to talk about fear. And we're going to do lots of uh, scriptures today. Uh, because, I mean, I can tell you, you know, we can talk about fears and um, and just what fears are and they hold us back and they paralyze us. We can talk about all those things, but there's lots of scripture packed in this because I think it doesn't matter the worldly, the encouragement we get. If we can believe what God says about fear and about uh what he gives us. I think that is so, so important. So there's lots of scripture packed in today about fear and overcoming fear. And that seriously, God didn't give us fear. He did not give us a spirit of timidity. So we'll read about that. One. Uh, we're going to learn about rational and irrational fears. Um, I mean, fear is an emotion that we have that uh, is sometimes a good thing, like fear of snakes. I mean, we don't want to get bit. And so we're obviously going to avoid that. So that's kind of a good, that's a rational fear. Um, but we'll talk about some other like irrational fears, like driving over a bridge. That's kind of an irrational fear. Uh, we'll talk about some coping skills that you can put in your toolbox. And we're going to apply God's word to help you have more confidence and to help you really uh, support your uh, your confidence, support your, um, I guess it would be your say yes muscle, because we don't want you fear for you to always say no and deny things and just uh, go your own way. So uh, we're going to help you learn some things that help you say yes. Let's see, Carlos, now you're on here twice. <laughs> um, let's see, we're also, we want to help you break the cycle of fear. We're going to try to identify some fears and we want, um, I want to help you break the cycle so that if you can identify it, then you can say, you know what, I recognize it, I'm identifying it, and I don't want to do it the next time it happens. And we're going to, I hope I can give you some some coping skills to help you overcome, to overcome that. Because uh, we want you ultimately, I want you to step into God's plan for your life. Um, and, you know, and my life is not perfect either. There are things that I'm, I'm fearful of and that kind of hold me back and that, uh, that I have to work on too, because they're always there. Uh, Satan's always tripping me up and, and, um, making me think that I can't do something, um, you know, in one way or another. So let me share my screen so that we can look at our handout. Okay, here's our handouts. Uh, yeah, it, it's they're kind of sideways or they're kind of crooked because my printer fed them in there crooked. I didn't realize that till after, so <laughs> that's okay. We'll get it done. Um, okay, so this is lesson four. Um, so we're going to talk about fear. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what triggers your fear. I mean, do you even know what, what triggers it, what starts it? And, and maybe you can name, uh, help you get some coping skills uh, so that you can get beyond those fears, get beyond that, uh, that anxiety that you have when that pops up. 
So um, the first thing I want us to do is write um, Psalms 139, 23 and 24. And if you don't get these all written down right now when we're talking about them, uh, right, uh, you know, go back and look at those and um, go back and look at those and look those up on your on your study time when you're having your your quiet time with God and really ask him about how you can overcome your fears. And this first this first um, scripture is is a good start it says search me oh god and know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting so to me, that's like a huge start is to even say, Lord, search me and let me know. Bring it to my attention. Bring it to the forefront of my thinking. Have a friend. Um, tell me about it and be honest. And let me know, Lord. Somehow I want you to let me know what it is that I'm not doing that I'm letting fear overtake what you want for my life. And when I was reading that the other day, I had a question and I thought of this question, do you equate anxious thoughts as offensive towards God? I really hadn't thought about that before until I read this whole verse. Because God didn't make us to have a spirit of timidity. So I guess that makes sense. Our anxious thoughts are really offensive towards God because he didn't even, he didn't create us that way. We put that in later. We put anxiety in. Um, and so maybe that's, that's a lack of faith in God. And so that's a really good prayer. Lord, help me know what is offensive to you. So that I can uh, work on that. And you can help me put that away. Uh, here in a second, I'll let y'all uh, maybe tell me some of the fears that you have. So be, so be thinking um, about that. But let's talk a little bit about the fears. Um, because all fear is not bad. You know, God gave us that emotion to help us maybe determine if things or situations are dangerous. Fear tells us I'm going to get out of a situation. I mean, have y'all ever had a situation where I, I, you just think I need to leave? I need to go. This is uh, dangerous or this is not where I need to be. Um, sometimes fear is, is a good thing to get us out of, out of a situation. But sometimes we imagine fears and we think of um, something that might happen that is just worry, is just anxiety, things that, that we imagine. And I don't think those are, those are not what God intended. Um, so some fears are irrational or imagined. But living in fear is not what God has for us. So let's look at our next page. So I want you to write down 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So which one of those do you have the most trouble with? Self-discipline or do you have trouble, the most trouble with 
loving and having mercy. I want to hear from y'all. What uh, what do y'all what does this mean? Yeah, uh, Nanette. To, to me, I beat myself up a lot, so I don't um, give myself mercy uh, oh. when I can't get things done as uh, fast or as um, well as I think I could have. Mm hmm mm hmm So lots of beating myself up. Yeah. Very good. So, uh, so anybody else, which one of those that you have trouble with, if you have a spirit of timidity, maybe you don't feel like you have that power. You don't feel like you have love or mercy, or maybe you don't have self-discipline. I thought it was interesting in this verse that the word spirit is capitalized for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. So that spirit is capitalized. We have that big S versus that little S. And when your little S, when your spirit is, uh, when that little S is given you um, you know, based on our family dynamics that we talked about or based on situations in our life that have happened or maybe based on our personalities when our spirit is uh, is fearful or anxious. Sometimes there's no room for the big S, the big spirit. So we have to try to eliminate those fears and eliminate those things that we put on ourselves so that God's spirit can reside in us and we can have power. We can have love and mercy and self-discipline. So uh, let's, the irrational fears, um, this fear sets off maybe a physical reaction. Maybe you have a, a physical reaction uh, that's not appropriate to the situation. It can cause panic attacks, um, chest pains. Maybe you feel dizzy or suffocating. Uh, maybe you just feel out of control. Uh, maybe you start sweating. Um, I know somebody um, who, I mean, they were a child, but they were that scared of elevators. And an elevator would give them every single one of these uh one of these feelings um, until she grew older and and could actually manage that feeling but at first uh it was it was interesting that she could not do elevators um and i just want to say that i do believe sometimes that medications are necessary in some circumstances because there are some things your brain chemicals and just physically are out of whack and I do believe sometimes there are a need for medications but nothing 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 satisfies like the word of God and filling yourself up with that calm peace uh, and understanding that God gives uh, that is definitely a coping skill is to fill yourself up with the word of God. There's a really cool study that um, I do in a different class and it's um, called Calm and it is by Max Licato. It's called Anxious for Nothing. Um, and it goes uh, with the C-A-L-M uh, acronym. And it's, it's a really good study if you want to further have some peace and calm and uh, just kind of work on your fears. That's a really good book to read is, is uh, Anxious for Nothing by Max Licato. Because I read lots and lots of things. And I noticed in this lesson that I, I throw out several different things that I've read that are very helpful. So do any of y'all have any irrational fears? Like this list down here? Ooh, I gotta move. I know somebody who is terrified to drive over bridges and they will go 
five miles out of the way and under and to not go on one of those mixed master bridges around us, which is very interesting. Yeah. Any thought? I think my biggest fear, honestly, I've been thinking about is the fear of just not knowing. And like, I don't know, like how I say, when you get up, go to sleep at night, like you make plans the next day, the next morning, but things never go right. <laughs> like you say, it's not, I guess it's not our will, it's his will, but it's just the fear of me not knowing. Honestly. Yeah, the unknown. Yes. Yeah, I know. Like I feel like I can't. I can't remember a lot of things, and I beat myself up. Like as far as my memory, to like scriptures and stuff, I know, but I just forget. Like you know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. and I hate that. I hate dealing with that. That's and that's really part of my MS also with the memory side of my brain. But I still try. I still try. But it is scary. Mm -hmm. Fear of not knowing. Yeah, yeah, and that that is. We're gonna read some scripture just about trusting and you know that that even in the unknown in the what ifs there's one of our verses just about what ifs and there's there's you just have to have faith and just trust uh because we're not going to know i mean we're definitely not going to know all the answers so we we live in this unknown pretty much what's going to happen uh tomorrow What's going to happen in politics? What's going to happen in November? Uh, what's going to happen with our kids? I mean, there's that is one of the things to train your brain to not worry so much um, about the what ifs. Planning, I think planning is great. Making a plan, but then you always have to have in the back of your mind, how can I be flexible when those plans aren't what I planned? And and how to how to um, I guess be flexible and and re and just keep going and just redoing something. Oh, hang on, let me write down a couple more people who jumped in. I see Lynette and Theodora. Let's see. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Let's see. You make sure I get everybody. Okay. Okay, there's that. Uh, so we have a couple, I wanna ask you a couple questions um, about your fear. Um, is your fear a perceived threat? Um, like um, you think something might happen. So you just don't do anything at all. That's one what that's one question to think about, you know, a fear that you might have that might uh, paralyze you or might cause you to say no or that you don't uh, want to to do something maybe that God's called you to do. Is that fear is it a is it a real threat or is it just a perceived threat that something might happen? <laughs> And then are you unable to control your fear? Like I talked about a while ago, um, is it uh, something that you're uncontrollable? You start sweating, you get chest pains. I mean, is it controllable or is, is do you really have physical, physical issues? I mean, some people have very physical uh, things that happen when they, when they are in a very, in a fearful, when they perceive that, this fear is going to happen, whether it does or not. Um, and then one of the coping skills, uh, something that you need to ask yourself, have you ever tried to conquer your fear and do it anyway? You, does any of you have a example of when you did it afraid and you did it anyway and the outcome was pretty awesome? Anybody have a example of that? I don't 
something going to the hospital, but not as far as myself. I had a point where I thought that every time I actually got admitted to a hospital, that someone important to me passed away. I mean, oh. my mom, helping my mom, and I left the hospital about hours later, she passed. My nephew, I was in the VA hospital right on side of their hospital. He passed away the morning I was in the VA. You know, then yeah, my uncle just passed away and was there. I was sick. So I just start feeling like it, like fear. I guess um fear of um death. They say it holds me a strong it's my stronghold, I guess. I mean uh-huh. I just feel like it's just like my grandmother, she's ill right now. You know, I go over to see her. You know, she's eighty six. You know, my grandma she can live a good life, but that you don't want to see someone that you love, you know, go down. And it's just, it just hurts. Like, if something happens to her, like, if I feel bad, I want to go to the hospital, but I'm scared, honestly, in pain. That if I go yeah. in right now, my grandmother, she's been in the hospital, something will happen to her, honestly. I know I should not think like that. It's God's will, but mm-hmm. it does fear me. It does make me fear. Yeah. Yeah, because it's happened twice already, so... Yeah, that's an interesting, um, yeah, interesting um, circumstances. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. But like you said, I know I shouldn't think that. I know that uh, that's that's irrational. Uh, so at least you being able to say that, I mean, is is good that you recognize that. So that's that's a good thing to at least start that conversation with God is... Lord, I know that this is not anything to do with me. It's, it's, but, and, you know, please help my fear. So, um, I think the biggest misconception that we have about fear is that if we just avoid all the triggers, avoid all the situations, avoid all the people that we, that cause us fear, um, avoid all the stuff that makes us fear that we will have peace in our life, um, that we can just avoid all the, all the things. Uh, if we do it on our own, if we try hard enough and avoid all the stuff, we can have peace. Uh, and that's just a really big misconception. Uh, we have to stand with God in our fear and he helps us through our fear. There's lots of things he does not take away, but he can help us through it. Um, So if you have somebody that you know that just thinks that um, like they're beating themselves up because they can't control it and they can't do enough to make that fear go away and maybe they are putting themselves in such a small box. If they if they don't go out, if they don't get around certain people, um, if they don't do this and don't do that, then nothing will trigger them to fear and that's what their goal is. But their box is getting so small and so small. And then that is definitely not a way to do what God wants you to do if you're in such a small box because you think that's peaceful in there, if that makes sense. Um, So according to 1 John 4, 18, what is God's strength made up of? And I've written this out for you. It's 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. But the one who fears is not made perfect in love. So what is God's strength made up of? Now that that's an odd question about what his strength is made up of, and I'll try to formulate it in what I'm thinking it relates to. Uh-huh. Uh, 
God's strength is made up of just the Holy Spirit power that he gives us. Because I think of the scripture that, you know, when, when we really think we're weak, we're actually strong because in our weakness, his strength is made, you know, perfect in us. So that, that was my thought of mm -hmm. thinking, but maybe that's not what the answer is, but that was well, what my No, I think you're was. definitely on track there. The Holy Spirit, God's strength in us is that Holy Spirit. And, and he tells us that that, that Holy Spirit does not give us a, a spirit of timidity. And so yeah. that, that opposite of that is that confidence, you know, God's strength for us is confidence in the Holy Spirit that we have, not in us, but in that Holy Spirit. And it's also, I think, what First John says, it's love. Perfect love drives out fear. And that perfect love, that is only Jesus. We don't have it. That Holy Spirit has to do that work, has to be in us so that we can even attempt to get rid of that fear and live how the Holy Spirit gives us. So you're definitely correct on that, that Holy Spirit in us. So that's a good answer. I mean, that's more of what I was looking for, which totally makes sense is the Holy Spirit. So that's cool. Um, so I also had another book that I looked to. Um, it's a really neat uh, book. It's really thick. It is uh, Counseling Through Your Bible. And it's a really good book by June Hunt. It describes areas where we have fear. Um, and there's a couple of different areas I wrote down. The first one is security. Maybe we have fear uh, in our financial uh, stability, fear in our physical uh, security, maybe our physical health, um, and maybe our possessions. I mean, that is one area where we have fear that we're going to lose that. We're going to fear that we're going to lose our finances, fear that we're going to lose our health, or that one of our family members is is not healthy and going to lose uh part of their uh, mobility or lose their life or maybe even your possessions. Um, so let's look at Psalms 56, 11. It says in God, I trust and am not afraid. What can men do to me? So no matter if, um, financially, maybe we lose our jobs. You know, what can man do to me? We can still rely on God and not be fearful. Uh, what about our physical security, our physical health? Um, what if a drunk driver hits us? We didn't do that, but is that a fear that we have that something is going to happen and we're going to lose our, our physical lives or our physical um, well-being to be able to work or, and maybe our possessions, maybe there's a house fire or, or something. I mean, do, is that one of your fears that you fear that security, that it could be lost? Another way that we fear is our significance. Are you fearful that you are not, um, are you afraid that you're not significant to anyone? And does that create low self-esteem and low self-worth? Maybe that, uh, that low self-esteem makes you not step into your purpose. Um, Isaiah 2, 12, Isaiah 2, 12 it says, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. It's just another verse that is uh, full of encouragement. That God will help you through anything. 
you know, man can't do anything when we have God on our side because the earthly things don't matter. I mean, that's really hard because we live in the earth. We live in this world. It's really hard to say, oh, well, that doesn't matter if I lost my house. In the big picture, the big scheme of things, we're not going to need that house. I mean, I know that's really hard attitude. That's really a hard concept to get when we don't want to live in a cardboard box. But if we can try to wrap our mind around that and tell ourselves that and say, Lord, this is a hard concept. Help me believe that you are going to take care of me no matter what, no matter, no matter what. And then do you have a fear of losing relationships, of there being a threat to um, to something, uh, to people that love you, a, a fear of, rela of losing relationships or uh, losing talents or, um, I think part of this one is rejection. Is there a fear of rejection in relationships or um, just being accepted? So Isaiah 41 10 says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. So I think that's telling us to look toward God. Look for him for our self-worth. Look to him for our relationship. If our relationships um, are not fulfilling us or meeting our expectations, which most don't because we put too much pressure on other people to, to help us feel like we want to feel. But this is saying, look to God for that. Look to God for that perfect relationship. Look to God for that trust and for uh, just um, validating who we are in God apart from all the things we look for in the world. Well, let's go to the next one. So here is a list, um, another list of, of scriptures, to strategies to overcome our fears. Let's see. Okay, um, so this is kind of um, a method that you can use to overcome fears. First, you have to be willing to analyze what triggers your fears. Um, analyze what they are. And Proverbs 29, 25 says, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So analyze what your fear is. Anybody want to share? Uh, anybody who hadn't hadn't shared want to want to go through this method with me and share what uh, what's your fear, and then we can go through the next questions. So after you analyze your fear and you figure out, okay, this, this is definitely something that's holding me back and paralyzing me. Uh, the second one is commit to refocusing on something positive. Think about if it's rational, think about if it's irrational, um, focus on something that is positive. Now it may not, that may not mean that you don't have to deal with something that is, um, uh, is making you fearful. Maybe it's a person, uh, maybe it's a situation. That doesn't mean focusing on the positive, they do, don't have to deal with it, but you could always focus on something in the positive. And Psalms one, two said, blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. 
So that's just telling me that even if you are fearful, even if there is something in your life that is uh, making you anxious and fear that if you will fill yourself up with scripture, with what God says, then that is going to help you uh, be at peace. And it will help you delight in the law of the Lord. And the next one is get others involved. We are not on this earth. We are not here to do life by ourselves. God made us to be in relationships with one another. So Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Um, I have a couple of people in my life on different levels of this. One person, um, I have a struggle and I tell that person what my struggle is uh, and she prays for me and she knows what it is. And sometimes I don't even have to tell her. I just tell her, um, hey, I, I need prayers right now. And she's like, I got you and I can pray. And um, there's a couple of other people that they really don't know what that struggle is, um, but I know they pray for me. And so we have this little uh, code. And if I send them some emoji, just random, whatever emoji, they know that I need some prayers um, and they don't specifically know, but they know that I need, that I need some prayers. Um, so I have some people on different levels. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go gossip about it. I'm not going to go tell everybody about it. I mean, I talk to God mostly about it, but I do have that one friend that knows you know, just this struggle that keeps occurring, this battle that I have and, and she knows. And so she's a very trusted friend and um, she tells me some stuff too. And so it's, it's, it's very important. Find someone like that, that one person um, that you can uh, pray with, that can pray for you, that knows specifically what that struggle is and then have some other people that you can just say hey i need prayer you know, don't do life alone do any of you guys have people like that in your life that you can share your struggles with maybe just one yes ma'am you do good Good. That that always makes me feel like there's a burden lifted when I can confess that to her and say, I'm struggling with this right now. And then just saying that out loud, I mean, it just lifts that weight just to say that out loud and definitely to pray about that. Um, so the next one would be use God's truth, use scripture. So I want to read Psalms 46. I know I put verse one, but I want to read the whole thing. Because when I started reading this, I was like, oh, I just, I love this whole, the whole thing. So I'm going to read the whole thing. It is, uh, it's so comforting and encouraging. Psalms 46. Let's see if I got it. Here it is. Okay, so I'm just going to read the whole thing. It says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. So that's the verse that I wrote. But I kept on reading and just thought, I'm just, I just love this. It's so encouraging. So God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, for its waters roam and that, <laughs> though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. 
God will help her at day at break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So I just love all of that. No matter Kind of what I said a while ago, no matter what happens on this earth, whether, you know, who the, who, whatever goes on in politics, whatever goes on in the economy, whatever goes on uh, in your city, in the country, in your town, in your community, in your household, no matter what happens, God is our fortress. God is our strength. And I just really love all of Psalms 46. Uh, let's see. So the next one, uh, become aware. Become aware of, um, let's see, Psalms 56, 4. It said, in God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So that's just another one about man cannot do anything. Man cannot do anything that God is not more powerful and cannot, God can overcome. And he can give you that peace. He can help you through anything that man does, anything that happens on this world. Um, and then we did um, take risks. And basically that's like the do it afraid. You know, think about that. Do you need to practice? Do you need to do it afraid? Um, because let's face it, if we're always waiting for us to feel okay and feel uh, at peace about something before we do something, there's a whole lot of things we are not ever going to do because we have to do some things afraid. We just... We just do. And then I have a couple of verses about love. And we've already done one of them. It was 1 John 4, 18. And it was that one. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. But then I also want to add Micah 6, 8. And that's not on your paper, but I want to, when I was studying, I found this one the last couple of days, and I want to add that. Micah 6, 8. And it says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what is that? He even gives us a list. I love that when God in his word says, hey, this is what you should do. And here's your list. I love that so much. So this is one of them. He has shown you, oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I love that so much because I like lists and I like specific things to do. But all three of these are verbs. It's things that we need to do. We need to act justly. I need to love mercy. And I need to walk humbly with God. I'm sorry, what was the verse uh, that you gave on John? 
Uh, 1 John 4, 18, that's actually on page three of your notes. I just re- uh, I just reset it again on page four. First John okay. four eighteen. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Y'all have any questions or anything? Anything you want to add? I love the Micah verse verses that you gave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just found those this week. Somebody had said that in something I was listening to, and I loved, I loved those. I wanted to add that. I really liked the Micah verse. Um, and I really like this when I was creating this. I didn't really plan this pyramid, but I really enjoyed the this in pyramid. And when you intentionally work on your fear with God, it gets less and less and less and less as you allow him into your life more and more. Uh, so I really liked the way that that kind of worked into a, a pyramid. So I thought that was really kind of cool. So in our last page, uh, we're gonna answer some questions about our fear. And you can uh, put a couple of, uh, you know, you can add your fear into this and if you have anything to say or if you want to share anything um, um go ahead but if you have any kind of fear put this uh question put these eight questions and apply it to whatever's going on in your life i mean like that thing i struggle with i'm just going to be thinking about that uh is it is that fear likely to happen or unlikely to happen um is it rational or irrational you know what does that look like uh, the second one's very important. Do you fixate on that fear or do you push it away? Do you, um, there's a verse that talks about if you feed it and then uh, you feed it and then you think about it more um, and then it grows and then that desire and that sin drag you away. So are you fixating it? Are you feeding it? Are you uh, really giving your mind uh, into that, or are you pushing it away with the word of God? What do you do with your fear? Uh, number three, is your fear something from your past? Or is it something uh, that just happened recently? Uh, you know, how far back do you go in your past? for fears that you are bringing forward and to have that really uh, happened. I mean, another one, are they likely or really unlikely or are you just thinking about something from way back there that really has never happened, but you know, if that makes sense. I mean, how far back do you go where that fear was created? It's a lot about the what ifs. What if, what if, what if this happens? What if this happens? Um, and then that's all thinking about the future. You know, what if this happens and what if this happens? So is it in the past? Is it in the future? Hello? Yes, hello. I, I wanted to say that um, the early part of, of last year, um, I was in a car accident and I also huh? fell and fractured my finger. So now since having that car accident, I have that fear of... of um, you know, having another accident or that location, you know what I'm saying? It's kind yeah. of a fear of going there, you know what I'm saying? And yes. even with the fall, I was going to the trash can and, and I fell over the sidewalk. So I have that fear of when I go out, even if I'm walking, if I step on something that, you know, in my mind, it's like a, a, a flash will come back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, trigger. Yeah, that's a perfect example. That is, that is, that is a great example. So what do you do? What do you do about that when you have to go drive that way or? Well, I have to come that way every day. Oh, <laughs> so okay. Every day I'm <laughs> feeling this anxiety when I pass that location um, uh -huh. to come to work. Uh -huh. um, I, I get over it, but uh -huh. that doesn't say that it, I don't feel that anxiety. Anxiety coming um, up. 
Right. And even when I'm walking and, and, and the ground is unsteady and I have that fear that I'm going to fall, it's like a flash, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're going to fall. Be careful. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's just something within that I kind of just, you know, kind of like, you know, help me through this. Let me get through this, you know, and then I make it through it. But like I said, it's, it, it's still something that you go through. And I guess, you know, for most people I understand, you know, you go through it for a little while and eventually you'll get over it. Sure. Yeah. Well, and, and I have always said, and um, I don't know if I made this up. I think I made this up. I don't know. Uh, healing is not to, your goal for healing should not be to feel like it never happened. There is not one time that you're going to ever get to the point, I don't think, where you go through that intersection and probably don't think about it. Mm -hmm. But your healing is for you to have a small, where that, where that trigger, when that comes up, that the duration is smaller, shorter, and the intensity is a whole lot less. So maybe you can go through it and you can think about it that long. Instead of, you know, letting it get so, How are you? does that make sense? Sure. So that, Thank that's you. the, Thank you. Um, so that would be my goal. My wish, my prayer for you is that you'll probably always think about it, but maybe it's going to be just a quick, yep, that's what happened. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, so, oh, so, okay. Number five, or are we on number four? Oh, number four. Um, were you a small child when that fear emerged? Um, and is it, is it rational now at this age? I mean, that's just something, maybe that's something in the past that happened when you were little, that now you're still dealing with that when you're 50. I don't know. Um, and number five, how does the fear affect your life? If that fear makes you plan, makes you have an action, makes you uh, do something different, uh, and it spurs you on to moving forward uh, and farther away from it, then that's okay. That's that allowing God to help you through it. Um, but if it makes you become paralyzed, if it makes you say no, and if it makes you uh, be kind of irrational, like the person who doesn't go over the bridges, uh, you know, sometimes that's a, that's a, that's takes you 20 miles out of the way. I mean, you know, um, if it's something, I mean, that's, how does that fear affect your life? It could be good if you're making it be good, or it could be bad. And then do you give into your fear and become defeated? Does it just make your box smaller and you become defeated? Or do you work on conquering your fear by actions? And, and, and then write out actions, you know, make a list like, you know, one, two, three, these are going to be the actions I take. Uh, do you intentionally take steps to overcome or do you shrink away? I think I just, that's the same as the other question, just said in a different way. And then eight, do you share with a trusted friend or do you keep it hidden so much and you don't even talk about it with God and you try to do it on your own strength? And um, this goes along with eight. James five sixteen goes along with uh, number eight. This is therefore... Confess your sins to each other and pray and pray and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So I think um, definitely having those friends is super, super important. Um, so kind of to wrap it up, I guess our class will be kind of short today, but that's okay. I've got to...
Yeah, Paul got stuff and there's lots of scriptures that you can go back and, and look at and really ponder on. Um, Satan wants us to think that we cannot control our fear. He wants us to stay trapped. He wants us to stay paralyzed so that we don't do anything. But if we are grounded in God's word and grounded in God's truth, uh, we can really lessen the sting of that fear. We can lessen the duration. We can lessen the intensity. Uh, we can lessen uh, just our anxious thoughts with God's word. We can make it something that we go through quickly uh, and kind of, you know, kick Satan out of the way. Like not today, Satan, you're not going to make me dwell on this for hours and hours or days. You know, I'm going to get through it and I'm going to move on. Um, so I want you just to encourage you to live to please God. Don't live in your mind uh, and just think about all the worldly things. I want you to think about spiritual things and get some of these verses, write these down. Uh, you know, say them to yourself, put them on sticky notes. I always think that's a great idea is to put things on sticky notes and put them places where you can, where you can see them. Um, I want to, you to have a change of heart and I want you to believe that you can deal and cope with your fears. Uh, and maybe one day you will realize, hey, I don't even do that. I didn't even think about that wreck at that intersection today or yesterday when I went through. Amazing. And then we can just tell God, thank you, thank you for just putting that out of my mind because he's awesome like that and he can do it. So I think that would be awesome. So let God hold all your fears. Let God hold everything in his hands and just give it, give it over to him. And then next week we are going to talk about um, the stronghold of anger and resentment and unforgiveness and maybe and some things under those in our life. So that's going to be our our uh, lesson for next week. So again, just write down you know the scripture that meant a lot to you and your observation about that. You know about who, what, when, where, about that scripture. Uh, write down an application that you can do, how to help what scripture you need from God, uh, how you can ask a friend to pray for you, and then write down that prayer. And then even go into a deeper study if you need to about fears and how they hold you back. Is there anything else that anybody anybody wants to add? So thanks for participating today. I think I got everybody. Well, okay, I will say a prayer and then I will I will let you guys go today and I will see you next Friday. And I'll be in a different location next Friday too. So stay tuned and you can uh, you can see where I am next Friday. <laughs> uh, anyway dear lord thank you for this day thank you for this time together lord help us go out and conquer our fears lord give us strength to give us love uh, just give us that mercy and lord shield us from any of the triggers shield us from any fears we have that uh, lets us say no to where you are leading us lord watch over all these guys um, until next time we are here and Lord, thank you so much for all the blessings you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. So bye, you guys. Amen. Bye, Enjoy your retreat. Bye, Carlos. Bye, bye. Amen. Bye, bye. 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 See you, Dora.